Hey travelers, look at how terrible my cable management is. Maybe we'll address that one of these days. Anyways, I like Ruckus wireless networking hardware. I have a R730 here, and if you're familiar with the R730, you may be aware this doesn't run unleashed firmware. Well, I have one over here that is running unleashed firmware. Turns out there's a guy on the internet figured out how to flash these things to make them think they're R850s, and then you can load unleashed on them, and it'll allow you to use it as a master, a dedicated master in the unleashed network, which allows you to uh, do encryption to uh, the WAPs, uh, among other various control schemes. And it provides a little bit more oomph. Uh, so if your WAPs are overloaded with clients, this gives it a little bit extra compute for some of the more compute intensive tasks. So anyways, I figured I'd bring you along for the ride, show you how to take one of these standard configuration R730s and flash it to an R850 and give it unleashed. And then you can elect to use it as uh, R850 with potential issues if you use the wireless, um, or you could use it as a dedicated master like this, and then the Wi-Fi radios turn off. Um, yeah, and it should work pretty fine. I had this in for uh, a couple days now and it's seemingly fine, but there's some people on a forum that were talking about it and they seem to think that it works sort of stably, but you know, it's sort of a new thing. So I guess uh, at your own risk, but anyways, I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to plug it into a PoE port over here, and I'll shove it in there, and then we will go to a computer, um, and we'll access this thing over the network and get it set up. One extra note, if you're buying these from some random person on the internet at, you know, whatever the lowest prices you could find, I paid, uh, I think it was $75 for this, shipped, pretty reasonable price. You don't necessarily, of course, have control over what firmware and what version is going to be loaded on it which may have an impact over the hackability of this. Um, but I think the only firmware that these came with uh, is a zone director firmware. Um, so presumably it's loaded and most likely you're going to get these from a larger deployment that will f uh, reset them before they send them out. But if it isn't reset, if it's not acting right, if you can't access it over the network, um, you need to plug it into power and stick something into this reset pin over here until the lights do the blinky blinky thing. Um, but you can see here, one of these ports is PoE, the other one is not, and there's a 48 volt power supply jack in there, which is a small barrel jack. So, and you may not have a, a power supply for that. Uh, so PoE is sort of the bet. But um, one guy reported that he had an issue with PoE on his unit, he couldn't flash it with PoE, he had to plug in a power supply. So I don't know, it might be something worth considering when you think about that, but for me on that one, it worked fine with we'll see on this one okay we're off to a good start I can't connect to it so this thing will make a Wi-Fi network called configure me and it has a password the password that you need is your serial number on the back of the unit you type that in you should be able to connect to it and I did you probably have to also set a static IP uh, so you set it to something like 192.168.0.2 because the static for this in that interface is going to be 192.168.0.1 and you also need to set the subnet as 255.255.255.0 did that can't connect to it i don't know so we'll go ahead and press the reset thing here if i could get this guy to reset so presumably oh look at that it does some sort of fun panda express blinking thing and i let go of it it does a scary red light of death that make it look like it's dead and then after like i don't know 10 seconds or something it goes green probably. Um, so we'll see if I can connect to it now. A few notes here. So DHCP is most likely not enabled on this device, which means when I plug it into my network, I can't see it. And since I don't have a power supply that's 48 volts that fits that plug, which I'm sure I could rummage something up there and make it work. I'll just try it this way. Um, my plan is to connect to it over Wi-Fi just to enable DHCP through the web interface on like my phone or something. And then I could um, connect to it on a computer and do all the bits through there um, but yeah by default the IP on these things when they're not connected to their zone controller is going to be 192.168.0.1 um, so that 255, 255, 255, 0. so if your network doesn't work with that well you're not going to see it showing up uh, well you wouldn't see it showing up anyways but you can't connect to it um, so we'll see if I can connect to it now that I reset it 
I had a few issues with the setup. I couldn't get it to connect. The light wasn't coming on on the jack, which didn't seem like the best option here, but it is now. And what I needed to do to do that was replace the cable, which still didn't do it. And I moved it from this PoE Plus Chinese switch to this PoE switch. And then it worked for some reason. I was using this like stretchy cable and probably not the best option, but you know, I don't know. It's working now and I still had further issues. I couldn't get it to connect. Uh, over the Wi-Fi and actually turn DHCP on. So what I did was I made a, um, this port here on my firewall is configured to provide um, an IP range of 192.168.0.2 and up with a 245.245.245.0 subnet mask. So I have a little isolated network over here that this is connected to and my uh, computer upstairs is connected to. Yeah. I don't know, but this port, it wasn't working either, so I couldn't even connect direct to this with PoE power. It seems like the option is a PoE injector, and then you can connect it to right to a computer, and set a static IP on your computer of 192.168.0.2, 245, 245, 245, subnet mask, and then you should be able to connect to this unit, if it's reset, with an IP of 192.168.0.1. Um, yeah, I don't know, because this port wasn't working for me. But um, I assume the ZD firmware loaded on this, but I just bought it off the internet. And I don't know. But anyways, I'm connected to it now. I'll go upstairs and I'll take a look. Here we are on the computer and it's working. I'll show you how we got here. You go into the start menu, settings, or depends on what machine you have. This is on Windows, of course. And then you go to change adapter options. A little window comes up. You'll see this is the one that's connected. These got the little X on them. If you have multiple, then you have to find the right one. Go into properties, TCP or you know, Internet Protocol version 4. Properties, you could set it manually to 192.168.0.2 with a subnet of 255.255.255.0. And that should work because uh, the default is going to be 192.168.0.1, which you type that into a web browser there and it should navigate you to this page. This is what you want to see. The password is super for the username sp oh boy sp dash admin for the password and we're in uh you're gonna want to find the software version and uh type that you have over here and use this resource to make a determination so i got 5.2 on here and where are we yeah so this is the resource i'm looking at here of course all this will be in the video description and just for uh future success here, I'll scan through this so you can see all the bits on here in case the website goes down. Cool, great. So I'm version 5 dot something, 5 dot 2. So it looks like this is what I need to do. Connect to the web UI, yep. Uh, and I do the escape, or enable shell escape. I go to admin, diagnostics, and I paste this into the ping test box and hit run test, uh, where is it, diagnostics, ping, paste it in here, so we're in there, and run test, uh, presumably that means it worked, and if we go on here, I SSH into the AP, and yeah, it's supposed to work, all right, so I'm using PuTTY, there's a configuration, just type the IP in, open, uh, yeah, I will accept Log in as super, and then you need to log in, S-U-P-E-R, S-P dash, oh, I think I messed that up. It's kind of tough holding the camera. All right, we're in. So what do I need to do? I need to do this, V54, this. What's your chow? That didn't work. Uh, I don't know. I had a little bit of trouble, so I'll talk you through what I'm doing. Uh, my firmware is pre 9.8, so this shell escape command is supposed to work. It didn't for me. I didn't get it in the busy box. So I'm going to try loading on this version here 10.1.2.0.120, and then I'll try this command injection. And that's there. We'll see if that works. Um, 
Trouble is, in order to get this actual firmware to load on the thing, you either need a zone director or you can go to the website, you can download this image, and then you need to decrypt it because this is encrypted. This guy made a tool in order to do that. Um, I'm using the PowerShell version, so you need PowerShell installed in your computer. It needs to be a Windows computer. I'll scroll through this slowly. So in case this website goes down, that's always saved on the internet forever. Uh, so you copy and you paste this into a new text file, you know, like that, or yeah, new text document. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. You also need code on the end to decrypt it. It's this. And this is what my file looks like. So it's just a text file with that code pasted into it. And at the end of it, pasted this, uh, you put in where your file uh, you want to decrypt is and where you want to have it go out to. You save that. You append a .ps1 on there. And of course, you definitely need PowerShell installed. It should show up as a window, Windows PowerShell script. Can't be a .txt in the end. Uh, right click, run with PowerShell. And then you should get this unencrypted. I'm using 7-zip to uh, open the archive. Right click on it, 7-zip open archive. And then you go into this. Uh, and then he tells you in here where the file is located. It's in firmwares, AP patch, patch zero, AP arm 11 AX, file version or number or whatever. So let's go in there. AP patch, patch zero, zero, AX, that one. There's the actual file. Then you could dump that on there or whatever. And then you then you load it on your, uh, your web. And to do that, you go into your web like before, hit upgrade. Do, do, do. local firmware you select the file perform upgrade it reboots you come back um, and you should see that you're running this version so yeah from here we should be able to follow the instructions uh, and see if we could do this command injection so I'm going to copy that I'm going to use putty so my WAP 22.168.0. Uh oh. What's the problem here? Oh, you hit a key. 0.1. Yep. Hit enter. Log in as super, super sp admin. I ran. Now I type ruckus. And then I, apparently I need to type this, which is tricky one-handed uh that semicolon slash bin slash sh semicolon gur okay and now i should type this v54 this what's your chow hey busy box okay so now we have a uh a root shell on our r730 that we could where is it tell it how we want to do the things. We want to change the name to uh, make it think it's an 850. So let's do that. So here's what we want to do on this web. Now that we're in our root shell, I copy and paste that. Make sure this is right. Set name R50. Okay. Set model R50. And then commit. Is that right? That looks right to me. And boop, 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 boop. Uh, yep, I guess that's it. So now I'm supposed to immediately install Unleashed. And the Unleashed firmware uh, is freely available online. You could just go download it. It's a BL7 file like that. And you go through the normal web portal. Where is it? Upgrade and same thing as the other one. You dump it on there. So let's see how that works. Well it worked, it booted up and unleashed. You can see its little lights blinking away because it's broadcasting a configure me network. Um, so you can connect over Wi-Fi to that configure me network and then go to unleashed.ruckuswireless.com in a web browser and you should get the, uh, the web interface and you should be able to configure from there. Or you could connect it to a router and get an IP for it, uh, browse to that IP. Um, if you already have an Unleashed network, you should be, able to, uh, should be able to just plug it into that and it should automatically join. Worked fine for mine. However, one little quirk I noticed was 160 megahertz channel width 
seems problematic. Uh, this iPad is supposed to connect to 160 megahertz channels, and when I configure that to 160 megahertz, um, I can't see it. So, yeah, I don't know. Other people online reported quirky behavior with that. I'm not sure if it's me configuration issue or something like that, but and FYI, if you're trying to use 160 megahertz, 5 gigahertz channels on that, may be problematic. Um, and one other thing to note, you may want to manually set up the... Um, power on this thing to allow it to um, to allow it to draw more power um, in case you don't have a PoE plus switch. So I can show you how to do that. It's a little tricky. Uh, in the interface you go to access points. Uh, yeah, and then you could set for the R850 the PoE opening remote uh, so that one the class 5. Um, and that'll make anything that's called an 850 on the network, um, it'll force it to uh, allow it to have full power. Um, it may mean that in certain situations you'll get a PoE overpower. Like this is this is only a 15 watt PoE device, so I was getting the overpower uh, alert on that, and this was rebooting in certain situations. So you do need a switch that could actually output enough power, but generally this won't actually take more than like 25, 30 watts normally. Um, so you're mm, sort of safe, almost, to get away with running this uh, at full power um, off a PoE Plus switch. Regular PoE switch, it's not going to work, most likely. But PoE Plus, PoE Plus Plus, if it's not recognizing properly, it may say that it doesn't have enough power and it'll limit the performance. Um, but you can just force it, which is kind of cool. Um, overall, this has been working fine for me for a couple of days as a um, dedicated master. But for the actual Wi-Fi service on this, it uh, seems a little questionable, so I don't know if I would use it for that. Now, I actually bought this to use it um, as a dedicated master on another Ruckus network, um, so it's probably fine. We'll see how that works out soon. But um, yeah, it's running unleashed. It seems to work. Uh, Wi-Fi is a little questionable, though. I also did have it transmitting a configure me network. Oh, no, that's wrong. It's a um, technical support network or something like that it was like technical dot support dash some numbers and when you click on it it goes to some web form to like submit a technical service report or something i don't know but after i rebooted it it went away well i reset it and then rebooted it and then it went away so oh it's definitely a bit of a hack a little quirky but it seems to work 